from Kramer Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Aircraft manufacturer Boeing, along with South African Airways and its low-cost carrier Mango, celebrated Africa's first commercial passenger flights using sustainable aviation biofuel in July. Anine Killian tells us more. The flights used sustainable biojet fuel produced from research and development company Sunchem's nicotine-free tobacco plant Solaris in Marble Hall, Limpopo, which was refined by fuel refiner Alt Air Fuels and supplied by sustainable jet fuel manufacturer Sky Energy. Project Solaris was launched in 2014 and was an effort from Sky Energy, Sunchem, SAA and Boeing to develop sustainable biojet fuel from the Solaris crop. The SAA and Mango flights carried 300 passengers from Johannesburg to Cape Town on Boeing 737-800s, powered by a fuel blend made up of 30% aviation biofuel and 70% fossil fuel. Speaking to Engineering News Online, Boeing Director of Environmental Strategy, Darren Morgan, said that seven years ago, fuel costs were 10 times what the price of fuel was today, and pointed out that in the US and other countries, biofuel was selling at cost parity. Biofuels are on a downward cost trajectory because of the new technology that's going into them, especially aviation biofuels. Um, generally, petroleum is a mature industry, and so the cost for petroleum is really not a function of new technology per se, it's more a function of supply and demand. Biofuels, the cost, the dominant cost dynamic is the fact that the technology is improving so dramatically that the costs are going down a lot. The first biofuel flights six or seven years ago, the costs were about 10 times what the price of the fuel is today, for, uh, for instance, for the fuel for this flight. In the United States and other places, uh, the, the biofuels for aviation are selling at or near cost parity with petroleum uh, today. Uh, it depends on where in the world you are because of currency exchange issues and whatnot. But, uh, but generally, the, some of them are cost effective today. What we're trying to do as a company, Boeing, and as an industry aviation, is to increase the supplies and, in, and increase the technology investments to drive the supply chains to further drive the cost curves down for more types of biofuel. Biofuel that we're using for today's flight on South African Airways and Mango is produced in South Africa from biomass grown in South Africa. Uh, the biomass source is a plant called Solaris, which is a tobacco plant that has been bred to produce energy instead of smoking products. Um, in parts of South Africa, there used to be a very large uh, tobacco industry uh, growing for smoking products. That industry has collapsed largely. And so, but in the, in the place of South Africa where that's happening, in the Boko province, the um, unemployment rate is, is quite high. And so the idea of this particular feedstock is to bring back tobacco farming and bring back the employment that comes with it. Morgan said South Africa had a long-standing policy of supporting renewable fuel development and that Boeing, SAA and the South African government had been working closely over the past three years since the inception of the collaboration to help develop further technologies and supply chains. This is the first biofuel flight in anywhere in Africa. South Africa has uh, a long-standing policy of supporting renewable fuel development. Um, Boeing and South African Airways and the other parts of the South African government have working very closely over the past three years since we initially began this collaboration um, to help develop further technologies and supply chains. This is the first one. It's not going to be the only one. Uh, this is the first uh, step in a very long journey. Meanwhile, July also saw the launch of the Southern Africa Sustainable Fuel Initiative, which entailed a stakeholder and sustainability plan to ensure a long-term domestic fuel supply for SAA and other regional fuel users. The goal of the initiative is to scale up over the next several years to gain additional biofuel capacity. If successful, farmers would be able to tap into local and global demand for certified feedstock without adverse impact on food supplies, freshwater, or land use. Other news making headlines this week. Local hotel tourism rakes in 14.2 billion rand, despite visa gripes. And concentrated solar plants valuable for South Africa. Despite uncertainty in the domestic tourism industry, owing to the revised visa regulations and a weak global economy, South Africa can still expect healthy growth over the next five years, PwC's Hotels Outlook 2016-2020 to reveals. So in our outlook this year, what we saw is that revenues for the hotel market in South Africa grew by 8.1%, which is a very good growth rate. 
and this was driven mainly by an increase in average room rates and an increase in occupancy rates as well. Um, and this is also creating additional demand and also making the market seem more attractive again. And this is therefore going to lead to additional hotel rooms being added to the market. So we are forecasting an additional 2,600 rooms to be added to the market in the next five years. 54% of that will be within Cape Town. And I think one of the main reasons is given how popular Cape Town is as a tourist destination and just given the, the returns that Cape Town can, can generate. As baseload plants concentrated solar plants are highly sought after in the Renewable Energy Independent Power Producer Procurement Program, says Investing in Africa Holdings Director. What the Renewables uh, uh, Procurement Program has done is it, it's obviously helped uh, with the uh, supply and the grid with much needed power in a time when ESCOM was constrained. And I think that's part of the reason why we're seeing slightly less uh, the power cuts this year because a lot of these uh, power stations are now coming on stream and they are providing a couple of gigawatts of power into the, into the grid already. Um, obviously a lot of the renewable power stations are, are not baseload, they supply power only when the sun is up or when the wind is blowing, but we are involved in Bogport which does act as a baseload power station. It's got nine hours of storage and therefore is able to provide power. Um, when the sun is set. That's Krima Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.